If you're like me, then you've wanted to upgrade your nozzle on your 3D printer from a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to a 0.6 or a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Heck, maybe even a one millimeter nozzle if you're really brave enough. And I know a lot of people ask me, do you lose quality if you're printing with larger layer lines? And I'm here to tell you today that that's not always necessarily the case. You can still get great quality prints, even printing with a larger nozzle and larger layer lines. And I'm gonna show you exactly how in today's video. So stick around and watch the intro. Hey everybody, Big Jano here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I wanted to show you guys that it's possible to get great quality prints even with a larger nozzle in your 3D printer. I just upgraded a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on my Anycubic Mega X back there and I wanted to share with you guys my tips, my thoughts, and some of my profile tweaks that I had to do in order to get my 0.8 millimeter nozzle up and running as well as my 0.4 millimeter nozzle profile. It's not quite exactly the same as swapping in a nozzle and you're good to go. There are a few things in your profile settings, whatever slicer you use, that you're gonna have to make adjustments to in order for it to be optimized so you can still get great quality prints no matter what layer line you print at. While we will be covering a 0.8 nozzle in this video and PLA material for the most part, if you're gonna use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle or even a one millimeter nozzle, you are going to have to do some trial and error and tweaking some of your profile numbers compared to what I have in this video. However, most of the general tips and thoughts going towards larger nozzles in your 3D printer are going to apply. So just keep that in mind. With all that being said, let's dive right into it. So we are gonna make a 0.8 millimeter nozzle profile here in Kira for the Anycubic Mega X. However, we're not gonna to have to make it from scratch. We're actually gonna make it from our 0.4 millimeter nozzle profile and just tweak a few settings that are super critical uh, for this to work. So the first thing you're gonna see obviously is that our layer height can get larger now that we have a larger nozzle. I just have this set to 0.3 millimeter layer height right now. However, I have been printing up to 0.4 millimeter layers with this profile. In theory, you can go even higher. You can probably go up to 0.6 without having any issues. I don't recommend going that high. I haven't tested out 0.6 layers. And depending on the detail of your print, um, you're gonna want to lower that, especially if you have detail on a print that you wanna show off. But 0.3 to 0.4 millimeter layer height is what I would suggest. It really just comes down to what you're printing and how detailed it is. You can still use a 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 layer height if you really need the detail to show. However, if you're printing like large basic shapes, 0.3 to 0.4 millimeter layer height is gonna work perfectly for this. Keep in mind as well, you can also add a few more walls to your print now that you're using a larger layer line uh, and use less infill on your print. So if you want a stronger print, you can actually use more walls on your print and set your infill lower because you're using a thicker layer line. Those walls are gonna be a lot stronger in which you can use now less filament for your print and print a little bit faster. Again, I have it set for three walls here. I haven't changed that from my basic profile for my 0.4 nozzle. Because I'm working on a set project, I don't need too many walls right now, but play around with that. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts if you do play around with that and what works for you here, because this is a little bit flexible. You can change this if you need to, or if you find something that works a little bit better for your printer, by all means, have at it. One thing I would recommend changing here is your top layers here. I would add a few more top layers than what you have on your 0.4 profile. Uh, my 0.4 profile, I think, has three top layers. Um, I would change this to five or more. Uh, because I noticed when this profile, when printing top layers, because of the thicker layer line, you can see a little bit of pillowing. If you don't have enough layers, you can start to see the infill kind of poke through. So having a few more top layers than the bottom layers uh, it could help hide that a lot better on your prints and give it a better finish. Now, one of the more critical aspects of this profile we're going to talk about here is adjusting your nozzle and your bed temperatures. Because you do have a larger diameter nozzle, you're gonna have more filament going through the nozzle, melting and extruding. So to help compensate that additional amount of material that has to melt and extrude through the nozzle, we're gonna bump up our temperatures a few degrees just to help uh, make sure that filament melts correctly and have no problems with extrusion. For this profile, I bumped up my temperatures about five degrees all the way around. For my printing temperature, I went from 210 degrees Celsius to 215. And then for my initial printing temperature, I went from 215 to 220 degrees Celsius. And then for my bed, I went from 60 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. That's gonna help just make sure that first layer sticks fairly well, the extra heat and the extra amount of material that's coming out of the nozzle uh, just helps make that stick, that first layer stick really, really well. And like I said, this is only gonna focus on a PLA profile today for PLA material, but don't worry, I am working on a PETG profile video for the Anycubic Mega X. So stay tuned, that should be coming out here soon. 
hopefully but I am working on it because a lot of you guys have asked for it. I also haven't had to adjust my flow rate at all. However, if you start to see any over extruding or under extruding, feel free to play around with that setting until you dial it in just right. Now this right here is probably the most important part of the profile right here, and that is your print speeds. Because you are printing with a larger nozzle, you are gonna have to slow down your speeds a little bit in order for that extra amount of material that has to flow out to compensate to be able to lay down and print that layer. On my 0.4 millimeter nozzle profile, I had speeds going up to 60 millimeters per second. However, here, I don't recommend going anything above 40 millimeters per second. I also recommend you have your first few layers as slow as you possibly can to make sure that filament adheres and has enough time to cool. For this case, I have my first few layers set to 15 millimeters per second and my acceleration to 75 millimeters per second for my initial acceleration. For my overall print speed, I have it set to 30 millimeters per second, which is about half of what I have it set for my 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I usually set that between 50 and 60 millimeters per second normally. In terms of infill, I have it set to 40 millimeters per second. I've been playing around with this setting a little bit. You can have it set a little bit faster, and I found 40 to be the sweet spot with this nozzle. For your wall speeds, I would recommend having these pretty slow. You are printing with larger layer lines, so you do want to make sure those walls do have enough time to cool and print very well. Especially the outer walls, which I have set at 20 millimeters per second. That gives it enough time to print that outer wall, and it usually prints the wall very well, and I don't have any issues with cooling there. So 20 millimeters per second for the outer walls, 30 for the inner walls. You can go a little bit faster on the inner walls. I don't have a problem with that. For your top and bottom wall speeds, I do recommend having these slower as well. You wanna make sure those first few layers stick fairly well, and you also wanna make sure that filament has enough time to cool. And then for the top layers, you also wanna make sure it doesn't print those top layers too fast and have a really bad finish at the end. Your travel speeds are actually going to be the same as your 0.4 millimeter nozzle profile. So four millimeters at 35 millimeters per second retraction should be good to go here. The last part of this profile that we're gonna talk about, and probably one of the more critical aspects of this profile is your cooling settings. Because you are printing larger layer lines, you are gonna be printing a lot more material, so you do wanna make sure your cooling is adequate for those larger layer lines to cool. And that's also kinda of why we're printing a little bit slower, to give that more time for it to cool each layer. You wanna make sure your cooling percentage is as high as possible here in your profile. In most cases, if you're using the stock firmware, you wanna set it to 100%. I'm using community-made firmware, I'm using the Nutworks firmware on my AnyCubic Mega X, and 70% is actually 100% of the fan power here. So I have it set to 70% in my profile, but if you're using the stock AnyCubic firmware, set it to 100% cooling and make sure it's set on that first layer. I also strongly suggest having your part cooling fan on your nozzle situated at the correct height as best as it can be. I'm gonna show you guys in a few minutes what happens when that's not necessarily the case. And that's pretty much it for the profile. Like I said, not much has to change from your 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but those three critical components, the cooling, your print temperatures, and your print speeds, those three things are gonna help dictate printing with a 0.8 nozzle versus printing with a smaller nozzle and still getting great prints out of it. All right, we've talked to talk. Now let's take a look at some prints with this said profile. So one of the first things I printed was the hexagon catch-all tray by Pink3DP. I needed a new tray to house some of my accessories for my 3D printing equipment, a lot of extra spare parts, and this tray came out fantastic. I printed this at 0.4 millimeter layer height in Matter Hacker's purple gold quantum PLA, and I had no issues with the print. It looks fantastic. The color changes are amazing, and the layers look really, really nice, and they look clean. The print quality also looks fantastic here. The bottom layer does look a little hazy because I did add a brim to this initially and it just stuck a little too well to the side of the print. But cleaning that up, the actual print itself doesn't look too bad. And you can't argue about this awesome color change here. To test vase style prints with this new nozzle, I printed this wide facet vase for 3D Print Bunny with some Polymaker Silk Silver PLA I had lying around. This was printed in 0.4 millimeter layer height and I actually didn't use vase mode for this print in Cura. I actually used four outer walls, took out the infill, and had zero top layers. So this thing has four really sturdy walls on the outside, but it's still completely hollow on the inside. It's nice and strong, and the print actually came out fantastic. The layer lines look really nice, this film it makes it really shine, and I had no issues with cooling whatsoever on this print. To continue testing my 0.8 nozzle profile, I went ahead and printed the Fixum Dude Flexi Cthulhu at 150% scale with 0.4 millimeter layer heights to test to see how articulated prints still do with the larger nozzle. And I have to say, this thing came out fantastic. This was also printed in a 0.4 millimeter layer height 
with Polymaker Silk Silver PLA. Everything looks great. The layer lines look really nice. The detail, the print is still there. Everything on the legs broke apart and flexed as intended. Nothing broke off of the print, which is fantastic. And this just is amazing. This thing came out really nice. And I, I love shaking this thing. It's so much fun to play with. While I did have some good prints coming off of this new nozzle and profile, I did have a few prints that did not come out as expected. Let's talk about it. I tried to print this 200% scale Cali Dragon by Magai Beer, and I had a few issues with it. Obviously, it didn't finish, but I also had some issues underneath the chin with overhang cooling. It did not cool very well because of the overhang on it there. You can see more cooling issues behind the neck here, also underneath the chin, like I said earlier. It had to do with my cooling fan on my nozzle not situated at the correct height. Like I said earlier, make sure that cooling fan is at the ideal spot on your nozzle to cool efficiently, or else if it doesn't cool that well, or if it's in the wrong spot, you're gonna have issues like this, where the chin uh, and any overhangs you have on any of your prints uh, might not come out as well. And um, something I learned along the way. Although I have to say, even print fails in this dual color Matter Hackers material still look fairly fantastic. <laughs> If you do run into any additional problems with overhangs or with cooling, my suggestion would be to bump the speed down a little bit more until you get it working just right. If you print overhangs too fast, they do not print very well. They don't have enough time to cool. And in this case here, I believe that's exactly what happened. Just keep in mind with this 0.8 millimeter nozzle profile that you might have to tweak some things depending on what you're printing or how detailed a print is. If it has a lot of overhangs, you might wanna slow it down even more or maybe try to adjust the cooling so it's a little bit better in some spots. Just make sure you uh, understand that not every print's gonna have the exact same profile. However, this is a good base to get you started printing with a larger nozzle. All right, let's let Pass Big Jano wrap up this video. And there you have it, everybody. Those are my tips and suggestions for upgrading your nozzle to a larger nozzle on your 3D printer to print with larger layer lines and still get great quality out of your prints. If you have any additional questions on this topic or have any other suggestions towards profile tweaks or slicer settings, feel free to leave a comment down below. I like to make this list of advice collectively better for everybody. And as always, if you enjoyed the contents of today's video, hit that like button, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet done so. It greatly helps us out, it helps us grow, and it boosts our content to more and more individuals. So I appreciate all your support. And if you don't wanna miss out on the next upcoming videos or any of the upcoming content I have planned, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when new content drops. Don't forget to check me out on my other social media platforms as well. Links to those will all be in the description below, including a link to my Twitch live stream where I go live a few nights a week, hanging out with the 3D printing community, working on some projects, and just having fun in a laid back environment. With all that being said, that's going to wrap it up on today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you, especially those that made it all the way to the end. I'll catch you all in the next video. And until next time, keep doing it big.